that Bitcoin, and this was based, you were asked, Charlie said Bitcoin's like rat poison. You were asked about that comment and you said, well, it's probably more like uh, rat poison squared. Uh, Shout out to my random subscribers. Thank you for your support. If you want to get mentioned to my next video, like and subscribe now. Uh, Charlie went on in the meeting to then basically call Bitcoin turds. Um, he, he is an expressive sort, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. when he gets a little older, he'll, he'll mature. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask you about that because it sparks so much controversy, and uh, particularly on Twitter and some of the places where you might expect people who are trading in, in cryptocurrency uh, to be pretty um, loud yeah. about what they heard. What, what is it about Bitcoin that gets you guys so fired up? Well, when you buy a farm, uh, you look at the crop every year and, and what prices are, and you decide whether it was a satisfactory investment. I mean, you, you look to the asset itself and what it produces for you. When we buy a business, we look at what the business earns and decide how we feel about it in terms of what we paid. But we are buying something that at the end of the period, we not only have what we bought in the first place, but we have something that the asset produced. And when you buy non-productive assets, uh, all you're counting on is whether the next person is going to pay you more because they're even more excited about another next person coming along. But th the asset itself is creating nothing. Uh, one of the interesting things, uh, for example, is, is gold. Uh, if you go back to the time of Christ and you look at how many hours of labor you had to give up in order to buy an ounce of gold and you take it forward to now, you'll, you'll find the compound, right, maybe a tenth or two tenths of one percent. You know, and, and, and then you have to insure it during that time and make sure you know, somebody doesn't steal it from you and everything. But it doesn't produce anything. And uh, productive assets, uh, you, may have, you can pay too much for a productive asset. But I bought a farm in the 1980s and, and every year, look at how much it produced the way of soybeans and corn. And at the end of that period, I've still got the farm and I've gotten some significant income off of it, apartment house, operating business, but uh, if, if you and I buy various cryptocurrencies, they're not, they're not going to multiply, they're not going to be a bunch of rabbits sitting there in front of us, they're, they're just going to sit there. And I got to hope next time you get more excited after I've bought it from you, and then maybe I'll get more excited and buy it from you. And actually, we could, we could sit in the house by ourselves, and we could keep running up the price between the two of us, but at the end of the time, there's one Bitcoin sitting there, and now we've got to find somebody else. And the, and they come to an end. I mean, those. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a greater fool theory. That's what you're saying. It, well, yeah, it's 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 buying something because you expect the pool of people who want to buy it because they want to sell it to somebody else will grow. And 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 you know, it, it's wonderful because it does create a rising price does create more buyers and people think I've got to get in on this and and it's better if they don't understand it. That's the other thing about non productive If you don't understand it, you get much more excited than if you understand it. I mean, if you buy a bond that says you can pay you 4% a year, you're not going to get any pleasant surprises. <laughs> She's going to pay you 4% a year. But if you, if you, you can have anything you want to imagine if you just look at something and say that's magic. You can do it with shark's teeth or seashells or, or anything. And, uh, you know, they did it with tulips in, in, in the 17th century in, 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 in Amsterdam. And, and, and they'll do it again. I mean, people, they like to speculate. They like to gamble. And uh, if you can get something, particularly if you have something half plausible going on, mm -hmm. if you had bought gold in 1942 and you say, we might lose the war and we might have to run off to some other country and, you know, so let's put our assets in gold, you would have less than a penny for every dollar you got from owning stocks. Less than a penny. Now, if somebody calls that a store of value, I mean, I think they're delusionary. Okay. Bitcoin, you know, Jamie Dimon called it a fraud back in October. You followed up with uh, comments in December saying that you thought it was a mirage. Jamie Dimon yesterday backed away from those comments saying that Bitcoin is a fraud. Have you rethought your position on Bitcoin? And how would you feel if some of your portfolio banks wanted to make a market in Bitcoin, wanted to trade Bitcoin, wanted to make a business out of Bitcoin trading. Yeah, well, we don't we don't tell our the banks in the portfolio anything about their operation. But uh, in terms of cryptocurrencies, generally, uh, I can say almost with certainty that that they will come to a bad ending. Now, <laughs> when it happens or how or anything else, I don't know. But I know this: if I could buy long-term puts 
If I could buy a five-year put on every one of the cryptocurrencies, I'd be glad to do it, but I would never short a dime's worth. Have you thought about you know, trading the futures talking, to take a negative position on Bitcoin? No. You would not do that? No. There's no, re there, there's no reason. I, I get into tr enough trouble with things I think I know something about. Why in the world should I take a long or short position in something I don't know anything about? So, uh, you know, we don't have to know what cocoa beans are going to do or, 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 any, or cryptocurrencies. We just have to focus on eight or ten stocks that businesses, basically, that we think are decent businesses. Uh, but I do think that I, I think what's going on definitely will come to a bad ending. I mean, you've got virtually everybody. I, I have a class, I have 11 schools coming on Friday. The questions will be on Bitcoin, and I won't know the answers. <laughs> Although when we sat down, Warren, you did say, I should have announced that we were getting involved in Bitcoin this morning. Well, that is true. I mean, if I... <laughs> To, uh, uh, that, that would be much more interesting uh, to the audience that, that we were going to issue a whole series of cryptocurrencies tomorrow. But uh, we aren't, believe me. And we don't own any. We're not short any. We'll never have a position in them. Let me ask you. Imagine people selling their homes to buy a tulip in Amsterdam. Uh, if people think they're going to make money the next day, and worse yet, if they think somebody else that they know is going to make money and they aren't going to make money. <laughs> they, it, it, it just draws people in. You know, I, I, I could whisper something on this program and, and, and kind of the more silly it was, the more it might react because there's no quantitative limits. If you buy a stock, you say, well, I'll buy it at 15 times earnings, but I won't buy it at 20 times earnings. But when you get into something that doesn't produce anything, you know, there, there's no there's no checkpoints or there's, there's nothing to reference it to. It's just it's gone up. So it'll keep going. Now, I will say when I was tweeting the things that you and Charlie were saying about this weekend, all I was doing was repeating what you were saying. And people were coming back with some pretty angry comments, oh, including yeah. things like I bought a house uh, buying cryptocurrency. Uh, you're outdated on this. They said a lot meaner things that uh, you don't understand it. So you should shut up about it. What uh, you're you're not. Well, the interesting thing is if you're investing, you don't worry about other people. Say, if I'm investing in Apple, I love the idea of people saying Apple is terrible because I want the stock to go down because they're repurchasing shares and my interest will go up faster. You, you don't get defensive if you're buying something that produces that. You don't buy a, f a farm and get real defensive if somebody comes along and says you shouldn't buy a farm or something. You say, look at I mean, what's the crops grow and I can see what I sell. I'm selling my crop for at the end and I'm making 4% or 8% on my investment. Uh, you, you get defensive when you... You look at this thing and it doesn't do anything. Right. You're just hoping somebody comes along to pay you more tomorrow or the next day. And you're dependent on more people, the mob growing, you know, basically. So, so those people do get angry. But uh, the person that bought a house with it, I would say they did the very right thing. They, they sold, sold it. it. <laughs> they sold it and bought something else with it.